Hello, I'm Lucas Olson, owner of Olson's Upholstery and Tint LLC here in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Touching base today, we have a 1955 Chevy Bel Air two-door car that we are doing a complete interior restoration on. Uh, not such as a factory installation, more so a custom hot rod application. Pictures here shown with the car as we received it. Um, pretty much all painted, ready to go, minus the glass install. The doors themselves, there was no patterns to go off of, it was just a basic shell. Everything that we have done here is a custom one-off piece from the trunk being carpeted to back panels to door panels, seats, headliner, and the carpet in the floor. When we start a complete interior project like this, we like to apply sound deadener uh, throughout the entire vehicle as the floor pictured here. Um, the headliner and also the trunk area and also the doors if applicable. One of the steps we actually had to do was remove the old sound deadener from the factory from 1955. We literally had to go in there with a wire wheel brush and scrape and remove the entire roof of the headliner. Uh, very intensive project as far as labor wise but it needs to be done, it needs to be removed properly in order for our new sound deadener to stick. We try to cover as many square inches as possible when we do the sound deadener. Besides the sound deadener deadening the sound of road noise, it also is stopping a lot of the heat coming through from sunlight off the roof of the car and also the motor and transmission exhaust heat coming up through the floor. The first thing we start with is the headliner. Uh, in this application here, the customer had the original stainless steel bows. That was the style for this car. He had them painted the body color. We actually had to make our own headliner to fit. Um, we used the same material, the same classic black vinyl that we used on all the seats and the door panels. Very luxurious material. As we go along, we install all of the trim pieces to fit, um, such as the sun visor brackets, the rear view mirror, all the stainless steel trim on the inside of the vehicle. Here's a picture of the finished product of the headliner once installed with all the trim installed also. Next we start with the floorboards. Um, from the base floor to the solid steel floor, once we install the sound deadener, we are actually going to start installing the carpet. Uh, in this application we used a one-piece molded carpet made for this vehicle. Um, has the sound deadener and also the jute padding underneath the carpet. There is trimming and modification required. It is not just a drop-in application. We do have to steam it and heat it and it is glued down in spots. Uh, the finished product is a very nice finished look. Uh, this style carpet is a cut pile style carpet. Very easy to clean and maintain. Once we're installing the carpet, we're gonna start installing the sill plates. When we're installing the sill plates, the carpet is pretty much in its final stages of installation. Um, in the picture you can see that we have the back seat in place. We also have the rear quarter panels, uh, the armrest installed. We are just making sure everything fits properly once the carpet is installed. Uh, so on this specific model of car, the car itself was brought to us in pieces and we also had to install and modify a few spots to make the back seat fit properly. Um, if you can tell, there is some two brackets on each side of the seat frame that we had to fabricate and weld to the seat frame so that we were able to bolt it to the floor cross member to properly secure the seat. This is a finished picture of how the seat will be sitting in the car when it is done. The rear quarter panels are installed. The rear quarter armrests are also installed into place. All of our panels, including the door panel, quarter panels, and kick panels, are made of ABS plastic. They will never warp or bend due to moisture. Here we are installing the shift boot. Um, it appears to be white in the picture. That is a protective coating over top of it, but it's actually a polished stainless steel. We are test fitting it and making sure for the manual transmission. This is actually a picture of the template we had made out of tag board to make the quarter panels. Uh, as you can tell, the wind lace is actually installed on the car to get the proper fitment. Uh, once again, the seats are installed in the car to verify the correct fitment throughout. As you can tell on the passenger side door panel, that is a template that we have made out of quarter inch Luan plywood just for the fact that we do enough of these cars and we can use that template over and over again 
reduces the amount of labor involved into making a new custom template every time we have one of these cars come in our shop. This is another picture of the quarter panel shown with the black ABS plastic, how we actually heat and mold the top to conform to the top of the panel. Um, with all the trim installed, the back seat springs are installed so everything fits properly. This is the bare quarter panel armrest that is installed from the factory. This is primer steel right now. We also install a half inch closed cell foam on the top for an armrest pad prior to recovering it. As you can see, the left side is the factory steel one that has not been recovered. The right side is our new custom cover. The maroon insert with the pleats actually follows through into the door panels. Also the stainless steel trim on the bottom part towards the carpet follows into the door panels also. This is a picture of the top with the new ashtray pockets installed and how it is sewn to fit. And this is the complete pair ready to be installed. As you can tell we are installing it into the vehicle. Uh, there's two chrome screws that hold it into place. There is no other way of doing this besides using those factory holes. In this picture here we have made a template out of rosin paper for a back package tray. Uh, once again, we're just making a template just to ensure the fitment before we cut it out of our quarter inch ABS plastic. This car in 1955 came with a factory speaker offset to the left side of the package tray. Our customer wanted to install two 6x9 speakers evenly spaced. We had to drill through the metal framework of the back package tray and also duplicate that onto our quarter inch ABS plastic package tray that will be recovered to match test fitting the 6x9 speakers to ensure proper fitment. Here is a picture of the rear seat which has already been wrapped with jute padding, springs have been tied, and foam installed. We are test fitting the seats to ensure the proper fitment with the new foam, also to ensure the proper alignment for our seat design. This is a picture of the rear seat that is completely upholstered. What we are doing here is lining up our pleats and our seams with the back rest of the seat to ensure everything lines up properly. This is a finished product of the back seat being installed with the quarter panels and the quarter panel armrest installed into the vehicle. Here's a look at how the springs and the seat assemblies look prior to wrapping them with our jute pad and tying the springs. These seats were in fairly good shape, still needed some spring repair due to rust issues, but overall they're in very good shape. Here in this picture, the framework on the driver's seat was the worst case, to where we actually took an eighth inch round stock rod and we bent the new framework for the seat in order for our springs to attach to. This seat is equipped with four separate individual trim pieces, two on the bottom and two on the backs that flip forward. The customer never had these pieces or never came with the car, which we had to purchase new. Luckily, they are still being reproduced today at aftermarket. This is the difference between the left and the right pieces. We are actually gluing and attaching a quarter inch foam over top to hide any imperfections and also make it a little more luxurious feel when we wrap it with the material to match the seats. Here is a picture of a finished one on the top with this new stainless steel accent pieces installed. The lower one is wrapped with our quarter inch foam that will be wrapped over top. Here are the two lower pieces of trim that will be installed with the stainless steel installed also. We are test fitting the pieces to ensure proper alignment of the body lines on the trim. This is what we call when we are tying springs. Um, you cannot see underneath the springs right now and how we actually tied them, but on top of our springs before we do any foam work, we wrap it with a jute padding. Uh, this jute padding ensures that none of the springs are ever going to poke through our foam and into the seat cover. Also, it's making the seat itself stronger. A lot of times these springs are wore out due to the age and abuse they've had over the years. When we wrap with this jute padding, we're actually hoggering it all together, which makes the seat more rigid and it feels more luxurious than it actually is. Jute padding is a very durable material. One of the reasons that we do use it is because it is very durable and strong. Um, this is actually rounding over all the edges of the seat frame, um, all the spring edges, 
makes a very protective layer so that the actual seat covers will never be damaged if those ever wore to that point. You can see in the back of the seat here, um, it looks like there's tan lines going back on top of the springs. That's one of the things that we actually do to tie our springs together. It is actually a probably about a 3 16 metal rod wrapped in paper so it never squeaks or rubs against metal. What we actually do is we weave that in and out of our springs and hogging that into place. By doing this, you're actually tying in all the springs together in that seat versus just where your butt is sitting on those two or three rows of springs. Now you're actually going to be using all five rows of springs. It makes your springs feel better than they actually are. It adds some extra life to these springs and adds more comfort. Here is the actual seat installed in the vehicle with all new foam on it. Typically we put a two inch foam on the bottom of the seat and a one inch on the back. Here you can see that the trim is installed on the sides of the seat. When we actually go to recover this and make our patterns, this will be filled out so there's no gaps along the trim. Here we are starting to recover the back portion of the front seat. Um, as you can see, we have our templates made. It's in the process of being sewn and completed. Uh, all these seat covers will be hog ring on into place. It's also another great example of how we actually tie our springs. As I mentioned previously, you can see the tan wire going through the backs of the seats. That is making the seat more rigid and firm feeling. This is also another great example of how we tie our springs together. Um, you can see the tan wire, also the jute padding, also the foam on the bottom of the seat. Here we're actually doing a test fit prior to install. Um, we have the listing sewn around the front of the seat, which is hog ring on the top of the picture. Uh, what we are doing here is trying to properly fit the back portion. These seats came to us as bare springs, so we don't have any pattern at all to go off of, and it's strictly we are making our own custom-made patterns to fit. Here is Luke. He is also sewing the one of the seat covers up right now. This is the passenger side of the front seat. It's not properly installed quite yet. We are just doing a test fit to ensure proper fit. We are almost done with the bottom of the driver's seat. As you can see, we're in the process of installing the new seat cover. Uh, the gray going around the outside of the seat is a listing that is used to hog ring to the seat frame. There is a center flap in the center of the seat there that is actually hiding the center hinge. Stuff like that, we try not to overlook. This is the inside portion of the split back seat. Um, this is actually where their factory hog ringed when installed. We need to actually create a, a insert panel that hides those hog rings. Uh, once again, the seat that our customer brought with us never had this. We are going to make this out of aluminum so we can actually bend it and roll it to form the fitment that we need. Here's a look at the final front seat installed into the vehicle. Note how the trim on the sides of the seat, the seats themselves are nice and tight. There is no large gaps. Everything fits very nicely. Here we are onto the trunk. The trunk itself was a basic trunk. This trunk also had a spare tire cut out for it in there, which was never removed at the time. What we ended up doing, we installed the sound deadener first. We also took a sheet of half inch plywood and we made a hard surface that smoothed out the trunk floor for him. This way it's actually removable. He still has access to his spare trunk spot if he wants to store cleaning supplies or anything else like that for his car. Uh, so the carpet itself in the trunk is automotive grade carpet. We cut and formed it to fit. We installed a binding all the way around and it is glued permanently into place in the front of the trunk area. Here is one of the last fitment trials that we are doing carpet has yet to be bound around the edges. Here's a picture of the final fitment and installation of the carpet in the trunk area. Here's the driver's door. Uh, we actually have to make a door panel template for this. Uh, we have one previously made out of quarter inch Luan which we are going to use to make our initial template out of our ABS plastic. Here's the passenger side door where you see our quarter inch Luan template installed. Verifying fitment once again before we actually 
cut one out of our quarter inch ABS plastic. Uh, we're also trying to duplicate the rear quarter panel armrest into the door panels. Note we use polished stainless steel accent drips on the bottom. There will be carpeted along the bottom edge just in case you ever get out and scuff your feet. You don't want to be scuffing your vinyl and ruining it. The carpet's much more forgiving. What we have here is two inch wide pleats sewn onto a half inch scrim foam with the black vinyl on top. Here we are test fitting the armrest in the proper location. What we are doing here is actually installing the carpet on the bottom of the door panel. There is a bound top edge that will butt up against the polished stainless steel. It is glued on into place onto the door panel. Note the nice tight binding that we do when we install this onto the door panel. So the holes that you see in the pictures are actually the installation holes for the polished stainless steel strip. Those are actually installed with a very small nut and bolt that is pre-threaded into the stainless steel strip. This is actually how we bind the edges of our door panels. The carpet is glued permanently onto the door panel itself and now we are actually going to be sewing our binding on to the carpet which is actually being sewn through the door panel. Here's the finished product of our bound edge on our door panel and our carpet. Here's the finished product of the armrests which are wrapped in the same maroon vinyl that is used throughout the car. Here's a close-up of the armrest finished product. As you can see the top stitch that goes around the outside of the armrest is straight, nice and tight and a clean looking finish. Here is the driver's door that is finished installed onto the vehicle. This is the passenger side door also installed finished on the vehicle. Here's a nice shot of how the rear quarter panel and also the driver's door, everything lines up properly. The stainless steel lines up, the carpet lines up. Attention to detail like that is not overlooked. Here's a quick shot of the finished interior and it appears everyone is very happy. This 1955 Bel Air is just one example of the many things we do at Olson's Upholstery. To find out more about what we can do for you, go to www.olsonsupholstery.com.